Hello everyone. I had to do that for the finale, everyone. Anyway, hello, this is Matt the Speedstar, aka the Game Rebel here. Only one thing left to do. And that's to fight our true final boss. Also, um, before I do, quick thing to bring up. When I booted up the game, or at the very least when I reset the game, because uh, I recorded all of the uh, post stuff in one day. When I went to the uh, title screen, and I actually forgot about this, one. After you have completed the uh, main story of the game, pretty much, which is, of course, after you have fought the Queen Metroid and Melissa Bergman, after you have taken care of that and the credits have rolled, you unlock both the gallery and theater modes on the title screens, so you can see uh, concept arts and uh, cutscenes of this game. After you progress into certain areas of, like, after you do some progression in the uh, post story, you unlock more in the gallery. And apparently, when you get 100% items, you don't have to finish the game in order to get the rest of the stuff. You just have to get the 100% items. The same is true with hard mode, apparently. Once you've got 100% item collection, it pretty much says, well, you've done everything. Here you go. Here's hard mode. That's actually kind of stupid. Supposed to beat the game first, then you get the hard mode. I don't, I, I don't know why it's like that. It's, it's weird. It's weird. I, I don't hate it. It's just weird. Anyway, when you come here to the control bridge, now is our true final boss, returning from Super Metroid, Fantoon. The second boss in Super Metroid is now the final boss of this game. You've got the rage hands, you've got the eyeballs consistently appearing. You got the tentacle smashing the place, which of course depressurizes the place and allows you to actually hit Fantoon with your missiles. Now, I'm pretty sure it's because. It's because of this and the uh, Disbrasians as to why you cannot play this in hard mode. And of course, it's mainly because you gotta keep dodging, keep attacking, and you almost get no chance to really avoid any attacks. Like, you don't get any chance to really get any breathers. Okay, now I can hit him. No, I can't. Oh, actually, you just made that a lot easier for me to super missile you, buddy. Just like that, but did you see how little damage a super missile does? At this point, Fantoon might as well be the super boss. You know, not actually be an actual boss that you have to fight. But if you want the uh, full on. Holy crap, I do not want to get anywhere near those. I could also try and power bomb. Look how little damage that does. Power bombs are either. They're gonna do a lot of damage to one enemy, or like, just instant kill uh, nukes. Or in the boss's case. Barely anything. Whoa. I saw that coming. Now just imagine if I was fighting this thing in hard mode. I'd be dead already. Since I've uh, kind of got the chance... Actually, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, you know what? I'll save that for after I uh, complete the game. Okay, give me the chance for the lethal strike. Ah, oh, yeah. 
Normally, I just get either a charge shot or a missile on that thing. No, I went for the flashy lethal strike. Well, the blade is going to get destroyed anyway, so it might as well... I'm not worried. And that'd be that. Control bridge is pretty much destroyed, but uh, that's okay. Because we do not have to worry about this thing whatsoever. That went a lot quicker than I thought it would. So all this is like entirely new areas. I keep thinking there's like something up there. What you do is you come in here. And I still can't believe that in my first run of this game, I completely forgot about the item, the, the one missile tank, that's in the room that we're in right now. Anyway, the item, the uh, thing here is, uh, you need a power bomb. Completely obliterates the place. And that almost looks like actual lava right there. But yeah, this is how you get to uh, the room where uh, Adam it, where Adam used to be. And yeah, that this item that I got in here, I, just, I still can't believe that was the last one I got in my initial playthrough. And I didn't even know about it until after I had already completed the game. Which meant I had to do all that again. Anyway, we made it. Didn't take too much damage either, uh... That's a personal best for me, I think. Oh yeah, you also get this uh, music on the title screen after you've uh, gone past the credits. The only thing that remains of Adam is that helmet. Self destruction protocol activated. Please evacuate the facility immediately. And now we got this. It's not a Metroid game without, well, you know, having a timed escape sequence. So at this point, you're now pretty much at your weakest. All you got is your paralyzer. Just keep running. Don't stop for anything, and might be a good idea to keep this thing charged up. Because believe me, it is going to save you in the long run. So, let's quickly get out of here. Five minutes is usually plenty enough time, but of course, you're going to have a lot of obstacles along the way. Namely, these guys. And a couple more. Nope! I say nope to that! So amazing that the beams can actually travel through doors. I don't believe you can take any shortcuts at all. Yeah, they're so dead. Yeah, I don't believe you can go through that door up there. Can't even go to the bathroom. Alright, now here's where the annoying part comes in. You have to slide under. If you can't make it, you have to hit these things with your paralyzer until they open up. A charge attack works best. Now, if you screw up here like I just did, you've got to get away from these guys slide under and make your way back up. This is a time waster. 
And when you've only got five minutes to get out of this place, you don't want to waste any time, because believe me, it takes, I'm pretty sure, more than half of the overall time limit to get through this. Okay, it should be just about there. Oh, I want to be careful. I can also use the paralyzer to, well, paralyze these guys, just like in Zero Mission. I'd rather just hold on to it and make sure that, uh... Ow. I'd make sure I just hold on to it and use it in case a door closes on me, which is usually going to happen. I think it's kind of forced to happen in one or two instances. Anyway, once I get right down here... Okay, right when I get down here. I keep thinking there's gonna be an automated point in which you're just gonna continue running, but nope. I guess not. Well, don't I feel stupid. Sorry for keeping you waiting, Adam. Let's go home. It can't be a nice challenge to go through this. But honestly, as long as you at least make sure you know what you're doing, this is no challenge at all. And that is that... officially for Metroid Other M's story. And then on to Fusion, where we become part Metroid. Your rate for collecting items is perfect. Congratulations. And that is that for Metroid Other Rem. Now, once it lets me go back to the uh, screen. Because I still have a little bit of time. Once I'm back here on the screen, new chapters are now available in theater mode. Okay, so that's my reward for uh, completing the actual game. So, theater mode. You got all your cutscenes here. And, uh... These extra four here. These are what you get after you have completed the entire game. Of course, you got your options there to choose uh, your language and, I believe, subtitles. I'm not going to go into any of those because uh, I don't need to. Because, you know, you've seen them already. And then gallery mode. Gallery mode. You have eight pages. You get most of these when you uh, complete the first part of the main story. Which you will see... You'll know you've completed the main part of the story and got fast past the, uh, credits, excuse me, I cannot English, you'll be able to tell that you are in the, uh, kind of post-game when you see Melissa's clip there. And when you've officially beaten the game, as in gone through everything, you will see Adam's helmet. And that shows that you have actually completed the game. So, while I go through the, uh, gallery and stuff, because I'm just going to quickly show that off, and then I'm going to officially end this Let's Play. And I, I like a lot of these. Unfortunately, I don't believe I can, uh... I have to, like, exit in and out to kind of show these all off. But anyway. After you've gotten 100% item collection, you unlock hard mode. Hard mode is what they call... it is kind of what they call a no expansions run. I've talked about this before, but I'm going to go into full details about what goes on with hard mode. So for the entire game, you are limited to your base 99 health and 10 missiles, as well as any of your abilities that you get through authorization and such. Items like missile tanks, e-recovery tanks, excel charges, and especially energy tanks, none of that shows up. So, 
quite a lot of stuff that uh, you would normally uh, go through to get items in that is unnecessary, and a lot of that is uh, behind those power bomb doors, of course. In addition to that, enemies do more damage. And I definitely mean do more damage, like that mystery creature in hard mode is able to do more than 99 damage to Samus. And there's also one other thing, well two other things. First off is uh, during the battle against the Metroid Queen, when you're inside that thing's stomach, your health drains very rapidly, more than enough to take off a full energy tank before you can lay a power bomb in that thing's stomach. In hard mode, because you only have the base energy, the amount of energy consumed has been drastically reduced so you can actually survive the fight. If you're like in the superheated area of the Pyrosphere before you get your uh, Varia feature, uh, it's still the same thing pretty much. You still lose your health at uh, the same rate. But because you're being forced through that, they lowered that from like 5 energy a second to 1 energy a second. And now for the big thing about hard mode. When you took damage that would otherwise kill you, you would have a last ditch attempt to restore your energy by only having 1 energy left. Basically, you're at death's door. That has been removed in hard mode. Which means, pretty much, most late game enemies will be able to one-shot Samus from 99 to dead in one hit. Pretty much the most unfair thing that you can kind of go through in the game. And believe me, a lot of enemies from like... After Feral Crusher and onward, are very, very dangerous and have to be pretty much avoided entirely. So you do not want to only engage if need be, and be sure you are up. You got to make sure you know how to do all your uh, sense move and evasive tricks in that. You basically gotta not be hit in order to get through a lot of late game fights. Believe me, I have suffered one too many game overs going through hard mode. And I was thinking before that I was gonna do the remaster, which is the hard mode of this game. That's what the remaster would be for this game. But, I felt it was, I felt it would be a little too extreme, and I'm probably going to save that for something else. Namely, I'm probably going to go for, like, if I ever get the chance to, I will uh, do the remasters as a part of a stream, or maybe a second channel. Because I'd like to be able to get through the remaster LPs. Well, i just like to be able to get through them, and... I feel more comfortable kind of not just doing it like I do every other Let's Play. Oh man, these things. Anyway, I'm only like, uh, halfway through the... I'm not even like halfway through all the uh, pages yet. So... I'm kind of gonna just stop talking, and I'm gonna show off the rest of these now. And then, I get to officially close this Let's Play, and finally feel like I redeem myself, as well as actually have, uh, kind of gotten my point across that this game is not what everyone thinks it is. And I'm gonna say this for one last time before I officially end it. This game is not as bad as people make it out to be. Granted, it can be frustrating and things can be definitely different compared to the Metroid norm. But all in all, 
even though the gameplay has been a bit clunky, and the search view could kind of have been improved a bit, or maybe at the very least been touched up on more, I still think that the gameplay itself is very Metroid-like. A great way to transition Metroid from 2D side-scrolling to full-on 3D third-person without it being prime. And I do hope that uh, in the future, they look back on this game, they think of how the game plays, and they build upon it. They don't just scrap it entirely like most gaming franchises do when games aren't exactly well received. I would love them to look back on the games, just review them, experience them again, think about them. And think of what could we use that this game did for a future title. How can we improve upon what this game did? That is what I would like to see in franchises in the future. And not just for like uh, this franchise in particular, other franchises too. Especially Sonic. Because, you know, uh, I, I talked about this before in my uh, Sonic Adventure DX LP. I'm not going to get into that, though, because uh, the point is, I just don't want people scrapping stuff from games, just be from, like, future games, just because something that was used in a game that was not as well received. I, I just don't want them to completely abandon it. Because, that because that's just, like, giving up on something and not trying to improve on it. I would just like people to... I just like developers to think more about their franchises as a whole. Think about what they did with each entry and figure out what they haven't done, what they could uh, improve on, and how they can make something that didn't look like it received as well receive better in future installments. That's just what I want to... That's just something I would like to see. Because it, it actually does show a sign of progress. Reflection. And actually caring about your franchises. Sorry, I kind of ran into there a little bit. But to be honest, I kind of wanted to get that off my chest. I'd still like to see if they could do something like an actual... Uh, not as open as uh, Breath of the Wild, but... Uh, Pretty open, yeah, pretty open world, uh, kind of like a Link Between Worlds, more like. Like, you're limited at some points, but you still have freedom, and then as you play more and more into the game, you will still get even more freedom to go around and do what you'd like to do, and tackle things the way you want to tackle them. But you still have to have some manner of progression first. I kind of like to see something like that if they decide to go for, like, an open-world Metroid game. And hopefully, not be a remake of another one. I, if they do, like, a, if they do a Super Metroid remake with that whole open-world idea, then I'm just done. I'm just done. I've accepted and given up that there's any actual hope for uh, the franchise if they're just going to continue to do remakes. Every now and then it's fine. But when they continue to do stuff like that, continuing to like remake so many games that were that everyone really liked back then, then there is a problem. Okay, we're nearly at the end here, so uh, I think I've said my piece, and I think I've gotten my point across. For those of you who actually did stay to uh, finish watching all this. Ooh, this looks like some uh, comic pages. I almost wonder if they would... If this game was... If this game did kind of receive better. I almost wonder if they could have done like a legit manga. It's an interesting thought. Okay, just a few more of these to go and then I'm officially done. I do like a lot of these uh, concept arts too. They kind of go with the 
with a more uh, realistic slash anime-ish style. And I like it. I mean, this one right here, this really, really does look like Child Samus from the uh, manga in a way. And just how they, how they sketched it all out in that, I, I like that. Even this. It's half realistic, half anime-like. I like these concept arts. I definitely like going through them. Anyway. Pretty much it. Just Sector Zero, Metroid, Room MW, and The Queen. And this is this last page here is what you get when you uh, pretty much finish the game. Or rather, you know, get all the items in that. And then finally, the Queen Metroid. With Metroids in, a, in her back. Joy. I actually wonder how the Metroid Queen is going to be like in that uh, remake of uh, Metroid 2. I'm curious. But I'm not going to worry about it. Because we're done. For real this time. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I kind of did. I had my frustrating moments. I had... I got my uh, info out as best I could, I've sent my pieces about the game, I've done what I could to try to create an air of understanding. Now it's up to you guys if you are actually willing to try to understand, because if not, then I don't see you guys having any hope for uh, other stuff. Either that or you're just not willing to open up, which is a lot of the internet these days, sad to say. Alright, now I'm done. For real, I mean it. We're done this game. I can finally put it to rest. And I can figure uh, figure something out about doing another Metroid game in the future. Which one it is, I don't know. If anything though, it's definitely not going to be a Prime game. Because I, I was thinking about it and I'm going to stop rambling right now. So for my uh, familiar thing... So, until next time, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you wish to follow along this my other Let's Plays, please consider subscribing. If any concerns come up, I'll let you guys know my Twitter and additional info in the lower left box in the video and down in the description below. This has been Math Speedstar, aka The Game Rebel, Now I'll see you guys next time when we run through a new Let's Play.